Big visit weekends all over the country and Tallahassee might have had one of the biggest. So in this video, I got Warchan insider Michael Langston to run down the biggest names at Junior Day this weekend. But first, FSU fans, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We are covering recruiting 365 days out of the year and we need you no fans to be a part of it. So hit subscribe for me, please. All right. Michael Langston from Warchant, some big names. Let's get started right here at the top. The number one linebacker in America, Zayden Walker, was on campus. Now, he's out of the state of Georgia. How did things go for Walker? He's, he's Him and FSU kind of been been talking for a while now. Yeah, it's really strong. Um, you know, the, t the takeaway from the intel I got from the visit was – was very strong. I think uh, FSU Georgia is what I hear. Uh, FSU Georgia and Miami are the three teams he mentioned. But I think FSU and Georgia are, are way up there on on you know up there at the top of the podium. And I think the thing uh, you have to do when you're trying to get Peach State guys is you have to show them something unique that you know, differs you from you know Georgia. And I think from a personal standpoint of of how he connects with uh, just this team in general. And Mike Norvell and, and even Randy Shannon and all these guys and what they've done development wise, they, I think they've shown that. But it, it was more personal that uh, I think, like I said, you have to do something that separates them. And they nailed it. I mean, they nailed it really, really good with Zayden. I think uh, those two teams are going to be fighting out. I don't think it's like, you know, everyone thinks like it's a slam dunk for Georgia. And I don't I don't I don't think it falls into that category. I think it will be a battle. Um, I think for me going in the visit, I would say Georgia for me before they visited. And then after this visit, I'd say it's more 50, 50. It's close. It's closer than people expect. Okay. Yeah. Georgia heavy favorite heading in, but getting them to Tallahassee this early is big. All right. Another big time visitor wide receiver, Jamie French, fresh off his decommitment from Alabama, the number three ranked wide receiver in this class. He was back in Tallahassee. How'd it go, Mike? Yeah, it was uh, it was really strong, like he thought it would. Uh, Tremel Jones is his close friend, and uh, FSU quarterback True. commit was there, and and they're really close. I, uh, he told me like I've known him since uh, you know Tremel told me I've known him since he was in seventh grade. So this isn't like just a regular quarterback you know, receiver relationship, which is usually really good. But I think overall FSU did a really good job of just forget you know Tremel's in the picture. It's more this is about you, Jamie, and, and what you do, and uh, Jamie. You know, told us clearly FSU was number one. He actually said yeah. definitely when I talked to him. And so you, you really uh, you really sense like even before this visit that even before the Saban news that it was close to 50-50. Now I think FSU's definitely setting the pace in, in this recruitment. They feel good. I know the intel around that after the visit was very positive. We know he's going to take a lot of visits. We right. know he's going to see a lot of schools. But I think FSU is uh, really setting the pace, not just – from a football standpoint, he sees what FSU did with Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, these guys, and how receivers are so utilized in unique ways um, compared to maybe other places where, you know, it's mainly just, hey, you're going to throw me the ball, where FSU is more, they do a lot of blocking, they do a lot of running, they use the receivers in, in run situations, and I think he just loves what, what the way he feels when he's on campus. It's a different feel. Like, when you listen to him talk about FSU – you know, other places he's talking about, yeah, this place is great. This this they do this program does this, but the feeling when he's there at FSU is different. You know, the connectability to mm -hmm. the staff, the connectability he knows a lot of the players. He's close with Luke Cromahawk. He's close with Charles Lester. He's close with a lot of these players that are already on the team. His quarterback's going there. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of ties and connections. I think that makes him feel comfortable. That's going to be. I think a difficult thing to break for a lot of teams. Certainly they're going to try, but I think FSU certainly sits in a pretty good spot so far. Yeah, and Jamie French going to be one of the most highly coveted wide receivers in America coming off that decommitment from Bama. Speaking of decommitments from Bama, Zion Grady, one of the top edges in the country, number 40 overall. He was in Tallahassee this weekend. I think it was his actual first visit since that breakup with Alabama. Now, he's going to hit right. Georgia next weekend. Not in any rush to decide, but what are you hearing on Zion Grady and where the Knolls stand after this junior day trip? Yeah, I think the most important thing, um, we're waiting to talk to Zion, but we we got we still got intel, plenty of intel that went around the visit. I think the most interesting thing is the coach that he's closest to. Now, I'm not talking about closest as in FSU and this is the staff he deals with, but he's very close to uh, Coach JP, John Papoos, uh, over there, the defensive end coach. He said, that guy is the one I'm closest to, like out hmm. of anybody. So that, that spoke a lot to me of – 
the way he views FSU. We've talked before, Josh, that he worked out at FSU at Seminole Showcase. He's visited FSU around three times last year. There's a very strong high tie to FSU. I think development is a big deal of what he likes so much about FSU. It's probably also why he's visiting Georgia. They also do a really good job as far as that goes. And then you have Auburn in there as well. I think I think FSU and Auburn, for me, are the two teams that I hear the most buzz about. And certainly I think FSU, maybe even a slight advantage of because they're the most recent visit. And I think he's not a kid that's overly energetic. Uh, even when you talk to him, when I've interviewed him, he's not a kid that's going to tip too much. But uh, people around him can tell me this, this, this type of visit uh, really seemed to move the needle as far as comfortability and, and, and development. And that's two of the biggest things I think with Zion. So they're going to be mm-hmm. a, a strong factor. And, and we've seen this before that it's tough to get kids out of the, the state of Alabama. So that will be a challenge. But at the same time, I think they're ahead of the curve of what they usually are as far as a relationship, because there's just a two and three year relationship where I think they feel got really good about how he views FSU in regards to Grady and so I think right now I'd say it's an FSU Auburn Bell and it's a close one. Yeah, always tough to pull those Alabama players out of the state of Alabama. Now, Gregory Thomas, he's the last pro- prospect I want to talk about on this list that was on campus. He goes 6'2", 185, a very rangy, athletic defensive back down there at American Heritage. Now, he had a great time. Is he? Does it sound like this one might be ready to close? Getting close. Uh, it feels like you're getting close. Obviously, Pat's there. Uh, it's America. He's American Heritage, uh, a, a legend over there. Uh, we've seen already. They've added three American Heritage guys from the portal: Earl Little, right. Marvin Jones Jr., Devontae Brown, um, and, and and we'll cover a few more uh, in the in this piece. But Gregory's one that I think's been really sold on FSU. There's a comfort level that's different. Obviously, you would expect that with Sertain there, and just. But it's more than just certain. I think it's what they do with their DBs that really resonates with him and the defense. I think the guy that doesn't get enough credit for FSU recruiting, and we, you don't hear his name a lot, is Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator for FSU. He is extremely involved in all these defensive recruitment, and I think he's played a big role in uh, helping FSU as what has to has Mike Norvell. So this is one that I think is close. Uh, I think he's going to visit maybe Miami uh, soon or, or in, in maybe a few other schools, but I – He's one that I would put on the Clay's radar, and I, I certainly feel good about uh, the spot that FSU's in currently with this one. So that leads me to my next question. Who do you think could be next to commit? Now, it doesn't have to be somebody on that list. It could be somebody on that list. But yeah. just in general, who do you think right now for 2025 could be the next recruit to commit to Florida State? Yeah, I think for me, um, it would be Gregory Thomas, uh, uh, DB we just covered. And uh, Tavion Wallace, uh, because Tavion's been there three times. This is his third time. Every time, it, and I, wa- I watch what kids say when they go on different visits. He's never said anything else, uh, any, anything like this with FSU, but or other teams is like he's always said FSU's number one. You know, he said that mm-hmm. again uh, this weekend. I checked with a few a little bit more intel, and they they feel very good about their chance. And that. It feels like the way he's talking and the body language that he's about ready to do it. You know, uh, so I'd say Tavion's probably the highest. And then behind him, I'd say Gregory Thomas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And then after that, I'd say a guy they made the biggest search for, in my opinion, was uh, running back Byron Lewis, who's out of American Heritage as well. Four-star running okay. back. They're, they're certainly very involved with Usman Cromo and certainly Alvin Henderson. But I've heard this guy is right there in that group uh, as far as how they view him. He was formerly coached by, by Pat. He knows Pat well. There's a great relationship with Yak. And if you remember, this was a visit that was set up very quickly. Uh, they got him on campus, or, or, or should, should say very quickly as far as in the later parts of the week that, hey, they want to get it done. He got there. He raved about FSU. He called FSU his top contender when he talks about other schools. Ohio State's been the team that you, you hear the most RPM about, but I've heard that FSU is the team that's on his mind uh, mm. you know, after this visit. So I think there's been several big moves, but I think those two guys, but I think uh, Lewis is one to definitely, they've made a, a, a major jump as far as in that recruitment. 
All right, Mike. Well, it was a big weekend in Tallahassee. You guys, let me know. Comment section below. Who do you think FSU can pick up that was on campus over the weekend? Let me know in the comment section below. Mike Langston from War Chant. Thanks for dropping by the Inside Scoop today, talking a little FSU recruiting. Anytime, Josh. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.